I'm not saying it should be hitting should be a part of men's hockey. I'm not saying it, it should or shouldn't, but I'm, I'm questioning how you as a woman's hockey player feels about that. I think, and so there's probably two parts to this one. I think it should be, we should have hitting in women's hockey. I think um, it would make for a more dynamic game. Okay. Um, I also think it would be more entertaining. Mm-hmm. And knowing that at the level I am now currently at, I'm technically, you know, working for a business. And if we're trying to get more people to watch or more people to come to games or invest or whatever, we want a more attractive product. So I think personally for our league, we should add checking. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of The Mental Advantage. We have Mallory Soliotis, a defender from the NWHL Boston Pride recent champions. We're going to find more about her story, but first and foremost, hi, Mallory. How are you? Hi, Bryn. How are you? I'm so happy to be here and chatting with you on like video. We're so used to talking on audio. So this is awesome. Yes. Yes. And I don't know if you are detecting, I did say Boston, right? So she's got a little bit of that East Coast accent going on. I'm on the West coast, but I love that. I, I fashion myself a bit of a, a you know, a, an accent aficionado, but I'm not going to do it. So, <laughs> so tell me Mallory, I want to know, because obviously first, you know, being a women's hockey player is uh, pioneering in some aspect, but I mean, we're going to get into the history of that. But first I want to know about you and your beginnings. Um, was hockey the first sport for you or was it something else? Yeah, I actually started learning to skate when, like, right before I turned three years old. So, you know, kids were, like, running, walking, starting soccer, and I was like, get me on the ice. So it's actually a funny story. Uh, My older brother was um, learning to skate and, you know, starting that journey. He's three years older than me, so it was, like, a pretty good distance between us um, just age-wise. And getting dragged along as the younger sibling – I was like, I want to do that. I want to do what he's doing. And then I want to be better than him. I was, you know, this is a very common thing for me. You'll find that I'm very competitive. So my mom, who didn't do hockey at all growing up, took me over to like the figure skating rink where they had a team practicing and they were wearing like the pretty dresses, whatever. And basically the coach kicked us out because it wasn't a public practice. And my mom being like the stubborn, sassy woman she is just turns and goes, well, when my daughter signs up to learn to skate, you'll find her on that rink with all the boys. And it was just like super accomplished. And so like, she was like, yeah, I show her. Um, meanwhile, the lady probably didn't really care. Um, but yeah, my dad grew up playing hockey. So that's how we kind of started getting into it started learning to skate, but I also did soccer, um, baseball, a little bit of gymnastics. I was terrible. That did not last long. There's only a few pictures out there of that. Um, no one needs to go there. Um, (laughs) what else I, I did like, I've done a little bit of golf, you know, I was on the swim team at one point, um, hated that. Not fun. Who does that? Um, Yeah, I did a lot of sports. I think my parents really liked having us kids be busy. Um, And most of the time my dad was like, stay out of trouble. Just, you know, not that we were in a, an area or a town or in a situation where that was common um, or what you'd find in other cities. Um, We were in a very small town, a really good academic um, town. So it wasn't something really to worry about, but my dad was always, you know, being the overprotective dad we yeah. love him but right, yeah that's right. how I got into all the sports I loved I hockey and soccer were my two main sports growing up um and I did them both pretty seriously through high school okay um, but I always knew hockey was my favorite uh-huh. it was always my favorite but I recognized that you know you don't want to get burnt out like hockey is almost like a full year round sport. And I look at the kids now growing up and I'm like, parents get, get your kids at, you know, soccer. I don't care if they're terrible, like get them at soccer, go to lacrosse, do basketball. I don't care. Like do other sports because you don't want someone to like just fall out of love with hockey just because they're doing it too much. So it was important for, you know, to have these other friends and learn because you can learn so much more from other sports too. Um, like soccer. I mean, 
I don't, I never really loved soccer, but I thought it was like fun, you know, running around and like hitting people like, all right, sign me up. All right. So we had to relocate uh, because we had a little bit of a sound issue, but it's all good. We're going to pick back up. So you said that um, you played soccer and you also spoke a little bit in your beginning about like being a multi-sport athlete. So you knew, I love how like your brother, I, first of all, I love the story about you talking about your mom, because my question is, I wonder if that figure skater guy is like, <laughs> you know, open to you being there. If we're talking to Mallory, the figure skater today, instead of the hockey player, do you know what I mean? Um, I'm not saying that's true, but I do wonder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, who knows? What if, what if we weren't kicked out of the practice? Who knows? Like, what if I was, you know, a star figure skater? I don't know. I think growing up for me, I was a super tomboy. I oh. wore a lot of my, my brother's clothes, like didn't like pink, didn't like doing my nails, like didn't like wearing like the glitter paint, like very tomboyish. So I kind of, and a lot of my friends growing up were boys. Oh, okay. So I think, I think I, it, for me, it was a no brainer. Let's go hang out with my friends and do this sport. Like, cool. Yeah, it all happens for a reason. Okay. So you pick up hockey and well, you start learning how to skate and it's turns it's born out of this older sibling sort of rivalry and competitiveness, which I love. Um, but tell me a little bit about like, so you're, you said you did soccer all the way up through high school. So when, you know, like, and I, what is, what is the season for hockey roughly? Yeah. Um, most hockey seasons go from about September, mid September, usually starting around Labor Day. Okay. Yeah. Ish. Um, okay. usually through March roughly. Okay. So like, and then over the summer you'll do like camps and all that stuff. Okay. Um, and then soccer was like a, a fall and I did it usually in the fall and the spring. Okay. So fall was, you know, September through the snow whenever that came. Yeah. Um, and then picked right back up in probably like April or so. Okay. So when you are doing both sports, where did you notice that your, your skills from soccer were sort of helping you in hockey or vice versa? I think for hockey, um, I just had really strong legs just from skating. So that helped in soccer, you know, you're running, you're kicking the ball. I always could kick pretty hard, um, that, and then, but cart like cardio wise, they both kind of helped each other out. Um, you know, I was always on the ice with hockey, you know, I was in shape. So by the time soccer season would come, I was pretty much fit and ready to go. And then I think soccer helped a lot with my like foot skills and a little bit of like depth perception down there. Just because in hockey, you know, sometimes the puck ends up in your feet or, you know, you don't get a pass right on your stick. So you have to like, so I was like more comfortable with like the puck at my feet just because I was used to it with soccer. So okay. I think it was, it was that aspect. And I think um, adding in the fact that in soccer, like you're on a team, like you're working together. Maybe I had a different role on my team in soccer than I did in hockey. And I think that just made me a more well-rounded teammate, I think. Oh, okay. So you were more forward or off offensive player in, in, in soccer. I know that, that you kind of have to play. Yeah. 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 And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't typically the best person on my soccer team. either. Okay. So that was, you know, just learning that type of role as a teammate was, was more, you know, it challenged me and, and then, you know, helped me make who I am. Okay. So it, I want to know, like, cause you know, I'm thinking about it. And when I was growing up, I'm from Chicago and we definitely had a, uh, you know, we have the Blackhawks there and it's, it kind of is a hockey town, but because I wasn't into hockey, I wouldn't say I grew up like watching a lot of Blackhawks games or anything like that, but I would be totally ignorant to the fact of when women's or, or girls had hockey teams. So tell me a little bit about like, you know, you, you saw your brother, you wanted to do it. Was there always a hockey team for you to be a part of, or did you have to play with the boys until they created one? Yeah, actually growing up, I was one of the few girls in our team, in our program, our, our town, our town had a program. Wow. So, um, and that was inclusive to all boys and girls. 
So um, it was primarily boys just because the sport itself is primarily male. Um, I would, at least growing up, it's becoming a lot more even now, which is awesome to see, like just the strict, like increasing girls playing hockey is just awesome to see. And I love seeing that and, and helping, you know, continue to grow that um, at the like lower levels and learning to skate and like playing hockey. Um, so I grew up playing with mostly boys and for my later years playing with the boys. So here's the fun thing about recording podcasts, things happen and you know what, I'm going to keep it in because this is what it's about. The mental advantage, both me and Mallory are having to practice extreme patience right now because we're having some connectivity issues, but it's okay. So really quickly go back to I think we were about to say that my team was mostly boys and then we kind of lost you. So take it from there. All right. So my team was mostly boys. I grew up playing with almost all boys. I was maybe the only, if not, there was maybe two girls total on the team of, you know, 16 players. Um, And we would play against teams and every once in a while there would be like one girl on the team, but it was it like, I was well known as like, Oh, that's the girl on the team. Like it was like, if you played other teams and stuff like that, it was like, Oh, like, before you go more into that, I want to know, cause this is the mental advantage. Tell me what that's like. Like, what is the, you know, are the, are the young men like automatically accepting of you? Is there some cheering, jeering and chiding that they're doing with you or kind of like unwelcome? Tell me a little bit about what mentally, you know, you may have had to go through or how that made, you know, helped you. Yeah. I think my team was awesome. They were super welcoming and accepting. They really treated me as, you know, one of the boys at that point. Like they didn't treat me any specially, like they didn't, um, you know, give me any special treatment. Um, my dad was one of the coaches. So that also helped in making sure that I was respected and that no one was saying anything. And, um, as I said, like I was typically one of the better players on the team, like regardless of gender. So that also like helped that respectful thing. And every once in a while you, you'd play someone play another team and, and you hear like, Oh, like, cause eventually we got to like hitting and hockey. Um, and obviously as a girl, like you grow a lot later, you're not as strong, just like biologically. Right. Um, and I was, I'm not a big person. I'm very, I'm on the like shorter end of the average female. Um, so I was small. Um, and a lot of the boys on other teams would like kind of like gun for me to try and like hit me. Um, and you know, a couple times, you know, they get me good or whatever, but my team was always really great at like step standing up for me. Like one of them would come and like cross check them in the face or, you know, like just be like, they, they would, pr- they would protect me like, like an older brother, honestly. Um, so that was, it was good. I mean, at the time I, I was like, yep, I'm the only girl and that's fine with me. Like it wasn't yeah. something that was a, a big deal. Um, most of the time. And, you know, but my team was soccer before with I'm assuming primarily young women what did you notice I mean besides the young men being and I'm so glad they were protective of you because I've heard stories of how teams do that protect each other particularly in hockey because of the physical nature of the sport but how did you feel like like obviously maybe you didn't know the difference because that's all you knew but because you came from an all-female sport what would you say, like, you know, like working with young men, you know, like how that helped you develop as a player? Yeah. So funny enough, I also played on an all girls team at the same time I was playing on this mostly boys. team. So I had at a time for several years, I was playing on two different hockey teams and then, you know, soccer was out of season two. Um, But what I found is on my girls team, there was one girl that I played on both teams with. And so like, we were really close because, you know, like we were always together at that point, just at practicing games and we were the only girls on the team. So a lot of the times the coaches would put us together because like we'd have more, we'd have, I found that like we had more, I had more fun personally on a girls team just because, um, you know, you're all girls. It's like easier. You can talk about like cuties and, and boys and whatever, but in the, um, in like the boys locker room at, at one point it gets to like them wanting to talk about girls and it can get like 
I don't want to say awkward or uncomfortable, but it's just like, they just don't talk about it because you're there. Right. So I would say I was a lot closer and I had a lot more fun on my girls team, but on the boys team, they really taught me a lot and just how to play smart, you know, how to not set my teammates up to get hit by somebody, but also like learning for myself, like when to expect to get hit. Not that it's a part of the woman's game now. It just, it helps, helped me become a better hockey player. Um, So there were definitely benefits to both. So they, so they coach men and women's hockey different is what you're saying. So at a certain age in boys hockey, they allow checking where you can just hit somebody instead of like playing the puck. It's kind of, okay. um, and, and so I can put you up against the wall for those of that don't know, like if you have never watched hockey, I can put you up against the wall to, to make it so that Mallory can come and get the puck, for example. Yeah, you can take the body and yeah. someone else can come get the puck versus in women's hockey, you have to play the puck. And if you like get in the way, then and you hit someone, it's like, meh. Yeah. It's, it's question, very, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like the rules should be different? I'm just asking because this is interesting to me that it is, I'm not saying it should be, hitting should be a part of men's hockey. I'm not saying it, it should or shouldn't, but I'm, I'm questioning how you as a women's hockey player feels about that. I think, and so there's probably two parts to this one. I think it should be, we should have hitting in women's hockey. I think um, it would make for a more dynamic game. Okay. Um, I also think it would be more entertaining mm-hmm. and knowing that at the level I am now currently at, I'm technically, you know, working for a business and if we're trying to get more people to watch or more people to come to games or invest or whatever, we want a more attractive product. So I think personally for our league, we should add checking. I think, you know, it's, I mean, and if you watch, um, even college hockey games or at the professional level, Olympic games, or, you know, USA versus Canada games for the national teams. Yeah. They are very, very physical games. Okay. Like it's, it's borderline. It's just borderline checking at that point. Yeah. Um, so I think, I mean, we're so close to like already being there. I think, you know, why not just do it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you, <clears throat> you're on two different hockey teams. Um, you're progressing through, I'm assuming this is high school with these two teams or when does this so start? Right before it started when I was probably, I started playing with all girls when I was eight. Okay. Like pretty early on, I got into this girls team um, and was playing on both of them. And I played with um, the girls team and I played soccer through, well, I played with the girls team through high school. Okay. Um, I played soccer and then I kind of just played JV in high school. Cause it wasn't really my number one sport. I was like, okay. kind of like, Meh. yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, and I went to private school. So I played for my high school teams, um, during those seasons. So your team had a hockey team that you could yes. play. Yes. My girls I, hockey team, or it was the same thing. Inclusive. It was, it was a girls hockey team and we would play against other, um, private schools and prep schools in the area. And it was, it's a, actually a very strong program and league. And, um, a lot of girls come from my area in New England to play college hockey, um, you know, after high school. So, so you, you mentioned that you weren't, like you said, the best soccer player, um, on your team and then hockey, you were much more gifted at. So when do you remember being sort of introduced to the mental game and like how that did that, was that more of a thing in hockey for you? Or was it just kind of like, you know, either way you felt yourself, you, I mean, cause I know it's present in both, but I'm just curious on like, you know, how you maybe navigated both or differently. Yeah. Um, I don't, I never really took soccer too seriously. Um, I just kind of like played and had fun and enjoyed myself. Um, you know, and for a hockey, I mean, the mental game, I never really, I mean, you talk about like sports psychologists or, um, you know, mental coaches, life coaches, all that, you know, that like bucket. Um, I never really had heard of that until I got to college. Mm -hmm. Um, and we had someone come in, it must've been my freshman end of my freshman year of college. And he came in and, um, I honestly forget his name. He was was like souped up on like eight Red Bulls, I swear. 
um, super high energy. And I was like, um, whoa, okay. <laughs> performance coaches. Yeah. I was like, um, okay, wow. Okay. We're doing this. Um, but yeah, that's when I was first really introduced to it. Um, and then, um, we, through my college years, we had a sports psychologist, a, a female, um, former college athlete, sports psychologist working with our team. And, and she was great. Cause she would, you know, you could set up a one-on-one -on -one with her and she was very available. And, um, I think being a, being a female is always super helpful, at least for other females. I think, um, we think differently than men a lot of times. Um, and then having her be a former athlete is super helpful too. Like she knows what we've been through to get to this point and what we're going through on a daily basis and like what stress um, and anxiety surrounds like performance and stuff like that. So well, I didn't, I didn't know anything about sports psychology either. Um, you know, I ran track, all that um, stuff all the way up through college, but I'm curious as to looking back, right? Like what, what, you know, maybe your dad gave you a speech or maybe, or maybe you weren't very good at managing the mental game, even if you were a high performer, if that makes sense. So in hindsight, like, yes, understand a sports psychologist, but, you know, because not all of us obviously have been introduced through that way, right? Sports psychology is yeah. definitely not something that is as present in the youth sports arena, but where, um, what do you remember about like, you know, kind of your mental toughness or lack thereof either way? Um, Hmm. I think, um, I started really thinking, I think in high school, our high school girls team would do like a period of like visualization before, um, games. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was, you know, the captain would shout, you know, visualize and everyone would, it would go, you know, turn music off. Everyone go quiet and just everyone kind of do their own thing for, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, whatever you needed. Um, for me, I had, I had this video that I liked cause it kind of like got me in the zone and, and it just kind of like grounded me. It was, it's, it's like the, it's the Nike commercial that's super old. You, you've probably, and there's a speech. Oh my God. Why do I not remember it? But you could probably look it up. Um, but it's got, you know, different, different video clips of, you know, big sports moments. Right. Um, and I don't know, for me, it just kind of like got me hyped up and like focused and excited to play and rather than like nervous about failing. God. Um, so I liked, I liked doing that. Um, and then, you know, saying a quick prayer or whatever, um, and then, and then get after it really. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you're playing in high school and, uh, all the way up through and obviously spoiler alert you already told us you, you you played in college which I would imagine given where you're at now but I want to know um what was the high school career was there a state championship what was the biggest or the peak moment of your high school career yeah oh peak moment um it's no pressure well, it's it could just be my, that, you know like you guys finished you know yeah so we in my four years there, we won our league title all four years, regular season. Okay. And then at the end of the year, there's um, a tournament and that doesn't just include our league. It's our league plus others. And okay. it basically takes the top eight teams and, and they do a tournament for the best division one and division two, like prep school teams. And I was fortunate and lucky enough that my team was played in the finals all four years that I was there. And we won twice and lost twice, um, which was, I think, you know, losing my senior year was pretty heartbreaking because um, it was, you know, my last game for my school and it's to end on a loss. I mean, not many teams actually get to end a season on a win. Think about it. Think about all of the March Madness teams. Right. <laughs> 64 teams, all like 63 end on a loss and one, like, so, I mean, that I mean, that was obviously disappointing. Um, and, but I w had a very, very successful team in high school. We lost maybe a total of like seven games in my four years and just, just like absurd. The number of talented girls that came through that program, a lot played division one, a lot played some play with me now at the professional yeah. level, which is crazy. Um, some played in the Olympics, like just wow. a very, 
Yeah, a very, very talented team. Yeah. And, a, and an environment that obviously nurtures this sport because, yeah. you know, right. So you, you said that ending, you know, first of all, I love that you said that about like not many teams, because I think Adia Barnes said that at the end of like, she's like, you know, like you do this whole tournament, you have all these games and the brackets, and then like only one team goes home happy. And I was like, that's such an interesting perspective that literally we're not satisfied if we don't win a national championship. Yeah. And so which, you know, I have my thoughts about but that. But then you look at UCLA and what they did on the men's side and you're like. All right. I mean, you like, yeah, when you don't go as far as you thought, like you get further than what people thought. And yet it's still like, but we didn't yeah. win a national. I just, I'm not sure that that's yeah. the mentality that I would want them to leave. Yeah. With. Like, hey, you know, I mean, I know it's not like, hey, it's good enough. We Nobody expected us to be here. I understand that the other side yeah. of that. But yes. so as someone who did go through that, not, you know, and we'll get to the higher levels of where you played sport, but how does Mallory, and this is, you know, just from your own experience, how does Mallory process a loss versus a win considering you only had about seven of them leading up into your higher level career? Yeah. So what's very interesting is my high school and my club girls hockey career were both very, very successful. As, as a team and, and personally. Right. Um, and you go to college and it's pretty much the polar opposite. And my parents were a little worried about how I was going to be handling it. I was going to Yale. They were not a good program, um, just strictly hockey-wise. And okay. um, they were like, I, and I knew that going in. It wasn't something that I was like, right. About. Like I knew, you know. So, Growing up, I obviously I didn't lose a lot. Um, I lost in the national championship for club girls hockey with my girls team. I lost twice in the national championship and I won two others. Okay. So I know I know peak success, but I also know being that close and just not getting it. And that stinks. Right. Um, and I think for me processing a loss, I usually pretty emotionally upset at first. Um just because I feel like there's always something I could have done better. Um, something I could have, or should have done or shouldn't have done, or, um, just like, and maybe it was a physical mistake or maybe it was a mental mistake. I don't know. Um, so I usually spend a lot, like first 24 hours is usually like what happened. Um, and then after that, I'm like, all right, like we learn from it and we don't do it again you know, I don't want to dwell on the past. I can't fix it. I can't change it. I don't have a time turner. Like it's, it's done. Like there's only so much you can do with that. So you kind of, you know, refocus, move on, learn from it, but also kind of take that like motivation and that, like that, um, you know, sadness to kind of propel you to the next, you know, whatever's next. Um, so I think that's something I, um, really take to heart. And then even off a of win, it's like, that's great. That's awesome. We did some good things. We did some things we can improve on. Um, but you know, next day we have to show up and do it again. There are other teams not going to just roll over and give it to us. Um, so I think it's something always continuing to prove yourself day in and day out. I think that's really valuable that you highlighted that. Cause I think a lot of times we have a tendency to learn from our losses or evaluate or examine our losses, but often we sort of gloss over what happened in the game when you win. And I always think of you know, uh, John Wooden saying, you know, you can play your best and lose and you can yeah. worst and win. So it's like, it's not just the scoreboard. It's, you know, what actually happened out there. Yeah. Um, so you said I was, so when I was talking about high school, I was definitely talking about your club experience as well. So there was a national championship. How yeah. many teams are involved in that? Is that only East coast? I mean, I know national yeah. means across the country, but does California have a hockey team? Like, you know, tell me about that. Yeah, so California does have a hockey team. Okay. Um, they have the Anaheim Lady Ducks, okay. and as well as um, they have another one, um, Cal like California Crush or something. They're an orange colored team. Okay. Um, we didn't play them very often. Um, but basically, you had to win your state championship or your regional championship to get invited. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I believe it was, I believe it was, how many teams are involved? Six, I think it's 16 teams get invited at each age level. Um, and then you do a three game round robin, um, quarters, semis, finals. Um, so I was, you know, 
uh, playing with this same club team. We like, I hardly ever lost with this team. Um, and a lot of us kind of grew up through the program from U10 all the way up to U19. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, a lot of us had lost together. A lot of us had won together. Um, yeah. but we, and so we understood, you know, what it takes to get to that moment. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there was a lot, I had a lot of success younger as a kid and, um, you know, really incredible experiences that, you know, any teenager would, would just love to have. I look at my sister now, my sister's, you know, finishing high school. She never got to play, um, in a national championship game. Yeah. Um, let alone I played in four. Like that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now you did, you said you, you, you never won in the national championship. So you know what it's like to get that close, those inches. Um, what is your most memorable moment in a national championship game? If you have one, I do. So, okay. um, so obviously like playing for, I won when I was 12. I won when I was 18. Okay. I lost when I was 14 and 16. Okay. And um, my actually like favorite memory was actually from when I was 16 and we ended up losing. Um, but it was in the national championship game. It was one to one. Um, and we had a power play. So we had five people on the ice and they could only have four. So we had a man advantage and basically, and I play defense. So I'm like, all right, I'm playing defense. I'm like, yeah. Our coach comes down the line and is like, you're going to go play forward next shift. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? I'm like, that's not a normal thing to do. Right. In hockey. That's a very weird thing. Right. So I was like, uh, okay, sure. Um, and literally off the face off, the puck comes to me. I like pretend I'm going to go this way, go come back. And I just, put one in the top corner, like probably had my eyes closed, but I was, and I was just like, you know, whatever. And basically I was, it was just, I was so excited. It was awesome. It was, you know, I had scored a goal and like at that point, the biggest game of my life. Yeah. Um, and the most important at that moment, it was, it was awesome um, to put my team ahead two to one. Unfortunately, we ended up losing three to two, but okay. still having like, relishing that moment was, was pretty awesome. Although it was eventually pretty um, sad at the end of the day. But that doesn't mean, right. And so then we, you know, like, I'm glad that that's still a positive that you have because yeah. like, a lot of times it's kind of like, yes, I mean, the overall, it's sort of like what I saw with Arizona in this particular year's tournament. It's like, yeah, we didn't get the outcome we wanted or even with UCLA, but it's like, hello, like, that's a pretty amazing feats that happened along the way. And I think we need to celebrate those small wins or those wins, even though the overall outcome isn't what we right. wanted. Um, and is it, it's, it's rare, obviously, like you said, um, for a defender to play offense. And I know that the, there is some thought in sports that have those sort of roles that are relegated to that. That is very also rare for a defender to score. Yeah, so this is obviously going to be a highlight because, you know, the, the, the offense always gets all the I never, I, Growing <laughs> up, I wasn't a big school score. I liked, you know, to pass it to someone or make a good play and somebody else scored. But I, yeah. yeah, I wasn't I wasn't a goal. I wasn't the goal scorer. I wasn't a big goal scorer. It's not what I was known for. So like having that moment at that time, like it was it was it was awesome. My mom was like screaming in the stands. It was it was yeah. great. <laughs> I bet. Okay. So I love that you remember that. Okay. So now you're, you said you decided to, so was there other, okay. So again, totally not familiar with the women's hockey, like, you know, the, the professionalness of it or the college level, are you being recruited since you're having such a successful jaunt with sports? Is there a school that you're turning down that has a better hockey program because you want to do this academic, amazing Yale, because I'm assuming that that was one of the reasons you chose Yale. Um, but yeah, tell me a little bit about that journey from, okay, I'm done with high school. It looks like I'm going to go to college. Are people recruiting you or are you just, you know, like, Hey, I'm going to go to Yale because it's Yale. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Recruiting is pretty crazy. Um, honestly. Um, and it's changed, um, a lot since okay. even since my time, just knowing my sister, she's six years younger. She, was just undecided between lacrosse and hockey. So she was kind of going through both. Um, yeah. so very interesting process, but, um, you know, I knew I wanted to play college hockey, like 
And I knew that was my goal. I wanted to play college hockey. I want to play division one college hockey. And I wanted to get a really good education because at the time when I'm, this is my goal, there was no professional hockey. There was no way for me to make a million dollars playing hockey. You know, that's what I was thinking. I was like, was it? Yeah, it wasn't around. So I was like, all right, I'll play four years of college hockey. It'd be awesome. I'll get a really good education and I can use that education for my career. Um, so I was always a very good student. My parents always emphasized school comes first. If you don't have good grades, um, school, your, your work's not done. No, you know, no parties, no sleepovers, no, um, play dates, no, no extracurriculars outside of school. Like you'd miss practice if your work wasn't done. Yeah. Um, so they always emphasize like do good in school because it can open doors. Um, if you're doing well in school and you do well on SATs and ACTs and all that. So my, my junior year of high school is when like a lot of the heavily recruiting for hockey took place. And I had a, I had toured a bunch of schools with my mom, just, you know, making sure I saw the, the campuses mostly in the new England area. Um, saw most of the Ivy league schools. Okay. Um, cause I knew that was a possibility just because the high school I was at is a very good academic, um, program as well as my grades were good. And I had taken, um, SAT and ACT, um, previously and had done like decent enough, like room for improvement, but like decent enough that I could probably, um, secure a spot with, with a school. So that process happened and, and emailing with coaches and, and kind of seeing, you know, do you need a defenseman? Are you in need of like, or do you want me? Um, and trying to figure out what kind of school I wanted to go to, you know, location, um, academic wise, I knew I wanted to do, um, engineering and, and biology type stuff. So that kind of helped me, um, with the like academic curriculum and figuring that out. Right. Um, so I had a couple offers. Um, I was, I, I eventually got down to, to Brown university, um, Yale, um, and a school card called RPI Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, which is an engineering school. Okay. My older brother actually was at the school at the time. So um, that would have been kind of fun. Um, maybe a little weird, but, um, but basically, you know, my parents, we sat down and we're like, you know, why are we paying for you to go to private school? Like what, like what, what's the goal? What was the point? And the point was for me to get a really good high school education so that I could use that to go to a really good college, to get a really good education, to get a really good job. Okay. And so, and obviously, you know, Brown and Yale, there were no athletic scholarships. So my parents were like, Oh boy, you know, yeah. this is what we're in for, but you know, we want to do everything we can for our daughter to be successful and happy. So they were like, if that's where you want to go, we'll make it work. Um, RPI was going to be a full athletic scholarship. Um, not as great a hockey program as Yale. Um, Yale was like slightly above the other two. Um, but I, again, it was all about the academia. So that's when basically I'd heard from, you know, the Yale, the Yale coaches that they, that they wanted me. Um, and I'd heard from the other two schools as well. Um, and basically, um, when I decided, um, I called the Yale coach who had been, you know, contacting, contacting me and recruiting me. And I was like, I think I want to go, like, I, I want, I want that spot. <laughs> and I literally just started like happy tears just because it was like, oh my God, this whole process is over. Right. All the time and sacrifices that it's like, it was like, it was done. Um, it was crazy. And then obviously I had to call the other two and be like, sorry. Yeah. Um, but I was just so excited to, to like really just look forward to Yale. I mean, it's an incredible, as we know, it's an incredible academic school and it would open a lot of doors for me just network wise, um, that I'm just really grateful for that opportunity to go to such an incredible school. Um, so interesting that, cause I've, I've had a former, uh, hockey player, a female hockey player on here, but not uh, you know, the professional level, but very interesting that both of you chose Ivy League schools. Yeah. Um, but maybe that's how it works in hockey because of the, and then I know the East coast, obviously it's a little bit different culture as far as that's concerned. Yeah. Um, so 
you're you're gonna go to Yale, yeah, and I love that. Like, um, I've heard that the recruiting process is like almost like a proposal and <laughs> like dating because it's like yeah, it's it's like weird. You're like, um, yeah, I really loved your school. Like, what do you think? And it's like, oh yeah, like it's a very wishy washy process, and it's you're like, are we dating? Are we are we married? Like, <laughs> what are did we- I get ghosted? Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Nice, nice. Honestly, you're you're spot on with that comparison. I never thought about that, but that's actually what it is. You're like, oh, do they like me? I don't know. Mm, well, yeah, I'm glad yeah. that it worked out. So you, you're you're a Yale bulldog. Am I correct on that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So um, it's obviously, as you said, academically, it is a great school. It is Ivy League? I mean, that goes without saying. But rigorous as far as the academic you know, um, draws on you. So when you are doing, um, sport as well, talk to me about how you balance that and like, how is that, you know, like, what are some of the challenges that you faced? Yeah. Balancing work in school, well, homework and, and hockey was, was pretty challenging. I think I got a really good introduction to that in high school because my high school was very rigorous Um, and I lived 40 minutes away from the school. So I spent a lot of time driving or getting a ride and, uh, you know, going to school and back that I had so little free time in between, you know, I do school, I go to practice, I drive, uh, get home, clean up dinner. And it would probably be, you know, seven 30 and I have to do and start all my homework. Um, so a lot of late nights and I often say that my high school was harder than Yale just because, I had less time to do more, like more work. Um, you know, I was taking five classes, you know, like a normal high school student. Um, and then once I got to college classes weren't as consistent, they weren't an everyday thing. So I had a lot more time to get all that work done. And yes, like the hockey commitment was a lot higher in college, but it would kind of like give and took. So I had, I just had a lot more time to get my work done in college. And because I was so prepared at balancing, like, you know, I don't want to do six hours straight of studying. I'm going to do two and then get some food and take break or do something else, you know, do, do another two. You know, I was very accustomed to that and to that balance. Um, and a lot of college was go to class, go to practice and lift, you know, clean up, get team dinner and then do homework. So it was a very broken up day. Um, so I really liked that in college that, you know, I wasn't doing school all day long and then homework all night long. It was very much hockey was a really welcome, you know, intermission to that. And you chose to commute. So you didn't stay on campus. In, in high school, I was in high school. I commuted in college. I was on campus. Oh, okay. Sorry. I got confused. Sorry, confusing. You were saying, okay, got it. I was like, oh, cause you're like, so you're- just cause I had so much less time in high school. I was driving. Ah, now I'm okay. So I was confused. Yeah. I was like, Wait, um, but I'm like, you were a commuter student in college. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yes. So you're on campus. Um, you're, 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 um, do you remember, like, I mean, did you already know that Yale was, I mean, you kind of said that you knew, but like, did you already know that Yale wasn't going to be the wind palooza that high school was, or were you like hopeful that it was going to change or they were, you know, like you, you were going to be the player that was going to turn it around? <laughs> yeah. I think in my head, I was like, oh, I can, I think I can really contribute, make an impact. Uh, to the team right away. I think it could fit right in um, with the seniors. And I, it's not that like we, we like, we were under 500 and, okay. you know, and that's so not great. We weren't the worst in the league, but um, we weren't great room for improvement. And I, you know, that's, I was a, a like my class at Yale was a large part of that change to um, a much better uh, program and, and culture. Okay. So, yeah. Are they better now? Like, you know, better now they're, they're just continuing. Well, this year they, they didn't play this year because of COVID, but last year they had their best year ever. And it's just, it warms my heart just because a lot of those, I think, um, it'll be next year's seniors will be like the freshmen when I was a senior. So like little babies (laughs) and just like so proud to see them like 
Like I took it from point A to point B and they've, they've taken it even, even higher. And they're just continuing to just, you know, push, push the boundaries. And that's just awesome to see. And that's really what it was all about. Um, you know, just playing hockey, um, and enjoying myself a lot and, you know, yeah. So who do you, uh, or what, what, what we're going to get to the next thing, which I'm super excited about because, you know, there's been some big moments in your life in the recent, uh, but what would you say besides obviously getting this amazing world-class education that Yale contributed to your hockey development? Um, I'm not sure it contributed a lot to, to my own development. I think my first two years, we had an assistant coach who I worked with a lot, um, individually doing some skills work, um, or in small groups. And that's really where a lot of my own personal development took place is working with her and doing, doing the things outside of practice, um, to work on my own game and how I can better contribute to the team. Um, and that was really helpful. And then she eventually took a different position. So she was gone. And, um, I basically, you know, I tried to work as best I could with other coaches on, on, you know, skills and stuff. It wasn't the same, but, um, I think a lot of my own, um, a lot of my hockey development was kind of put on myself at the time to, to take those extra steps and to do that extra work, to be a better player, whether it was watching film, you know, doing extra skill sessions, like getting in the gym a little bit more, getting an extra lift in or, or whatever it is, doing extra cardio on the weekends, um, stuff like that. Um, I think. Wow. It really that was by you. Yeah. Nice. That's great. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that helped. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm super competitive. So yeah, I, yeah. I was like, yeah, you're everybody else. I'm like always oh, trying to do better. I'm always trying to do better from the last year. Like, you know, on nice performance, maybe it doesn't show on the score sheet, but, um, if, you know, if I'm putting up points, I'm putting up points, if, but that's not what it's really about. That's great. But you know, how am I contributed, contributing okay. to my team? I think that's important for athletes and like, you know, people to know that like, it's not always about, right. Like just the win loss record so much that isn't on that stat sheet where, you know, I was talked to some of my professional athletes and it's like, you can have a great game, but if it's not what they, they keep track of, you know, it doesn't really like register. So funny. So funny. You mentioned that because this year, like there were so many games, I didn't have any points, but I played great. And it's just like, that's, right. You know, that is what it is. But like, if anyone actually watched the game, they'd be like, Oh, she's good. Like, yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's so important that people really grasp that, that it's not just always about what was the end result. There's so many things. And so I love that you had that. I think, you know, like what, what, what every coach wants is a self-directed athlete, an athlete who's that hungry for it, you know, yeah. and there, you just don't find that all the time. And you talked a little bit about your journey with the sports psychologist and all that. So at what point does professional women's hockey become a possibility to you? Like, does it get introduced because maybe it happens before you get out of college? Tell me a little bit about when you find out and what, you know, how that maybe changes, you know, your plan from, I'm just going to college to get a good education, a good job. Cause there's no upside to hockey for women. Right. Um, so the NWHL actually founded season one, first year, they were going to pay players, pay women to play hockey there. There was another professional league, but they weren't being paid. To okay. play. Um, but we'll just, we'll just ignore that. Yeah. Um, but they started this league, um, when I was a sophomore in college. Okay. So I was like, Oh, cool. And I knew there was a team in Boston and there was a team in Connecticut, which like at Yale, like. I knew like our coach, our assistant coach played on the Connecticut team. Um, okay. We're cool. And then a team in Buffalo and a team in New Jersey. And so I was like, Oh, it's like all in new England. Like, Oh, cool. And I kind of like watched and saw like the, the progression over those three years while I was in college and seeing it, seeing it really, you know, grow, um, you know, salary wise, just seeing that grow, you know, drumming up, continuing to drum up more people and more interest and more eyes on the game. Um, and actually my, the summer before my senior year, they held the NWHL draft mm -hmm. for the following, like drafted the up and coming senior. So what would be my class? And, you know, 
going into that day, it wasn't like we went somewhere. It wasn't a big deal. It was on Twitter. They literally would post a photo of the player and just be like, and the Boston pride pick, you know, whoever, like it was very low key, like not a big deal. Didn't drum up a lot of media. Fine. Um, but I was like, Oh, it's happening. Like, I was like, Oh, I'd always like, I would love to get picked. I'm not sure if I, I've, you know, done well enough to catch eyes from anyone, but it would be cool. It wasn't something I'm going to go and cry about. Yeah. Um, and eventually and I was sitting at a restaurant with my friend and cause we knew it was happening. So we're like, I need, I need like a beer or something. And I was like, uh, it's gonna be stressful. Like as much as you like prepare yourself, you're like, I don't know what's going to happen. Did and you have to be clear? Did you have to like tell them you wanted to or? No, no. They just drafted like random like oh, okay. college okay. players. Okay. It was very, yeah, it was like very odd. It's, okay. it's much more organized now. Got it. Um, but basically all of a sudden my phone just like lights up and just like all these things. Cause they, everyone starts like tagging me in in Twitter. And I'm like, Oh, Oh my God. I, I literally go, Oh my God. I got picked. Like, wow. I was like what? I was like, and like, it was, it was like that, that moment for me was, um, you know, it really summed up all my four years at Yale. Well, three at the time, my three years at Yale, all of that work was seen by someone like someone saw how good of a player I was, even though my team itself was not very successful right. and that I was, you know, someone recognized that and wanted me. And it's always great being wanted. Um, so that was like a really cool moment. And I like FaceTime my parents because I was away at school and I was like, Oh my God, I got picked. And they're like, yeah, we know <laughs> we were following like, hello. Um, but they were like, we're so happy for you, you know? And like at the time, like it, there's no like contractual agreements or anything There's not okay. that, um, being drafted really does. Um, it's a little bit different now just because of the timing. Um, yeah. So going through my senior year, I was trying to get a job. Um, and I was, but I always had like this, like hockey possibility yeah. in the of my head. Um, and I, I had a lot of talks with my mom a lot and I was like, well, I was like, well, worst case I go somewhere. I can't play hockey. I can play beer league hockey. It'd be fun. I'll enjoy yeah. myself, whatever. Um, I needed to pick my career based off of what was going to be best for my career. What was going to actually pay me the money, like right. my job in, in the biotech pharma science world. Like right. Where, where am I getting a job? And so that, and I was like, all right, like, let's find a job. If it works out, I can play hockey. That's awesome. But I'm not going to be upset if I have to go to California to work. Like it's not, yeah. who wouldn't it's sunny over there. Um, and basically end up happening is I, I knew I wanted to stay in Boston and a lot of the jobs in my field are in Boston, New England okay. area. And so once I got a job, I was like, okay, like maybe I can actually play hockey and you know, it ended up working out and I signed a contract for my first year. And that was, you know, three seasons ago and it's cr- absolutely crazy. Like but it started mm-hmm. there and, and now here we are. So tell me when you're signing this contract, knowing that this is like the, now it's not the first season of the NWHL at that point. So that would have been my, the fourth year of the league. The fourth year of the league. So you're signing the contract. And I mean, obviously, thank you for walking us through when you got like chosen, yeah. but it was like, it was still just like, a, I don't know what's going to happen, but now it's official. You're signing this thing. Is it surreal for you? Is it like, how are you feeling? Um, I think it's, it's funny because everything I was still, uh, how did it really happen? Well, I had like called the coach and like, um, like had a couple emails back and forth and I literally, he just emailed me like, or someone in the NHL office, like emailed me a contract. It was very just like, Oh, oh. <laughs> like, Oh, that's it. Oh. Like, <laughs> and so I like printed it out, did like a little, like, you know, s- signature and all that. My mom's like, Oh, photos. Um, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, it was obviously, it was like really exciting. It was like a little bit of like a roller coaster of emotions just cause yeah. I was like, I was like, uh, oh, hello. Like I was at work and I was like, oh, cool. Like it was just like out of the blue at that point. Yeah. Um, I wasn't sure. And um, so that was, you know, that was exciting. It was great. And and every year it's a it's a one-year contract. So I'm always like, 
you know, am I get there's no, you know, binding agreement to staying in that city or playing with that team. So it's oh. like, do I want to come back? Do I want to keep playing? Because obviously it's it's a physical toll on on our bodies, but it's and I, as we've discussed, like it's an emotional and mental toll too. Yeah. Um, it takes a lot. Um so yeah, I can't believe it's now been three seasons. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So tell we're gonna get to the championship in just a moment. Tell me about your first game, uh, not first game, first day with the new team. You're on the professional level of hockey. I understand it doesn't have quite the same feel as the NHL because of how yeah. long it's been yeah. in, but does it, I mean, and you said that some of the girls played with you, but is it a little intimidating or are you just kind of like, yeah, this is where I always kind of, I mean, not that you knew because that didn't exist, but like, it just felt more of the same. Yeah, uh, I recognize a lot of the girls just playing against them growing up, playing right. with them in high school, playing against them with them and or against them in college. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I mean, I was like a baby on this team. Um, oh, wow. I was a little intimidated um, at the time. I mean, I hadn't, you know, I hadn't felt that way since my freshman year of college. So it was like, yeah, I was, I was on top of the world senior year. And now I'm like, all right, back to the bottom. Like, right. Um, so, but it was, I had a really great group of, um, you know, veterans and leaders on that team that really, you know, helped take all the rookies under their wings or there were a bunch of us that year. Um, so I wasn't alone. It was kind of like the rookies all kind of like hung out together because we we're all, you know, fresh out of college, having fun, yeah. whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, the, I was a little intimidated and I was, I didn't know what to expect from the coach. I didn't know what to expect from the season itself. I didn't know what to expect from the team. I was like, I was, you know, very much just like going into it with an open mind. Like it wasn't, it wasn't a big time commitment. So just kind of went with it, ran with it and, you know, had fun with it um, right. and contributed as best I can. Okay. So fast forward, um, obviously this is the year of COVID and that has changed and altered sport altogether, but there's a happy ending to this year for you. So when does play start picking up and when do you start realizing like, it looks like we're headed to like, and is this the first time this is happening for you? So, so we really want to go back to March, 2020, see what right. happened back then right. um, over a year ago. Right. So my second full season with the team, um, our team went 23 and one. Wow. Yeah. So we went 19 and 0 before we lost our first game. Um, so really incredible group. Um, I, I don't like so many people have asked like, what, what, like, what was it? Like, I, and I don't know. It was, you know, everyone was there for the right reason. Everyone was selfless um, with that team. And, um, you know, no one thought we would be that good that year. And yeah. I think we kind of thrived on that and we loved it. We're like, like no one's talking about us. Like, like yeah. what? You crazy? Um, we went out there every single game. We went out there, and we knew we 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 had to win um, every single game. And we knew no team was just going to give it to us. Yeah, um, but we really enjoyed just you know going out there and just you know putting six goals in on on a team. Like a lot of the games were were kind of blowouts at one point. Um, at the beginning of the year, my parents like. Yeah, the game was boring. The final would be like seven to one. I kid you not. It'd be like seven to one. I was like, wow. Mom, I was bored in the second period. I know. Just because it was just like, oh, this again. Like, yeah. It's and it's but it got it got better as the season went. So we play our semifinal game. We win. We're going to the finals. Um, it was gonna be the next weekend. Um, it was actually gonna be on the on a on a Friday. Yeah. Um, and the infamous day of March 12th, right? Yeah. Um, when the NBA shut down and yeah. then all the other leagues, you know, right. domino effect. So they um, postponed our final 24 hours before. And I was like, oh my goodness, like what's going to happen? Because um, at this time, everyone was like, oh, it's just, just coronavirus. Like it's going to be like a three week thing, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um that's funny um so yeah we were like okay I was like all right so I'll just like keep training like I was still going to work on site you know whatever 
and eventually got to the point where it was, you know, June and it was like, all right, we, we, this game's not going to happen. Like, it's not fair to girls to expect them to be in shape and to play right. one game. So that stunk. And like testing wasn't really a thing yet. So it was, it was just, it just wasn't gonna, it wasn't gonna work. And the team had to, was from Minnesota. So they had to fly. So it was just, it just wasn't in the cards. And that was obviously very disappointing for a team that goes 23 and one is absolutely dominant. Yeah. And to be that close to the cup. Yeah. And to not even get a chance to compete for it. Like I didn't play and lose. Right. I didn't even get to try. Like you, you yeah. just like, no, 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 no. Like, bye. Like super disappointing. Um, I think emotionally I never really processed that because they paused it. Yeah. And it took months. And like in the back of my head, I was like, oh, maybe we'll play. And then it was just like at that point, I was just like I mentally checked out of the game that it was yeah. And that's, that's sunk. Um, and so going into this year, it was, you know, project, you know, unfinished business because we were, in, you know, one game. Right. Away. Um, and so structuring this year, we did a two week bubble in Lake Placid because of everything happening. Lake Placid site of the 1980 Olympics, USA yeah. upsets, Soviet union, miracle on ice. I walk in that rink. I went there as a kid when my brother played in a tournament. Um, but actually getting to walk in there and I was just, just like goosebumps. It's yeah. just like, like oh, just being in that, you know, iconic place for hockey, a sport that's I've known my whole life. It's, it's, it was just amazing. The first time I walked in there, mm -hmm. um, our team didn't start out so hot. Um, we went, we lost our first game. Um, we won the second one and we lost the next two. So we were one and three. Yeah. One of the teams had to get kicked out because they had a lot of COVID cases on their team. Um, so we didn't have to, we didn't play them. Um, so basically, you know, the league scrambled and they set up, you know, we were the um, fourth seed and we were going to be playing a, or no one. Yes. We were the fourth seed and we would be playing against the fifth seed. We would do a three game series to decide who would earn the fourth seed in the semifinal game. Got it. Um, and we had not, it's not that we, we were playing bad. We were playing okay, but we were getting, we weren't getting any lucky bounces. Like the hockey gods were like, no, like, no, don't let them win. Um, which everyone, everyone in hockey talks about the hockey gods, the right? Hockey gods, yeah. I think it's, I think it's universal to all sports. They just, yeah. they just say yeah. the soccer gods, the basketball gods, but yes. Yeah. Gods, yes. So, you know, and like we were trying, we were working hard. It wasn't like anything. We, I don't know what it was. Like I can't pin, like I can't put my finger on it and no one can. We were just like, we were playing well. We just like, we weren't putting pucks in the net. Like we're just yeah. not finishing. And that happens. And it's very frustrating because we would, you know, out shoot and out chance the team completely. We dominate and just like lose. Right. Like, two to one. It'd be like, oh, so we lose game one of this three game series. Oh no. So we're like, Oh Lord, <laughs> I'm, we are one game away from not even making the semifinals. Wow. I don't know what it was. You know, here we are as a team. We're like, all right, well, guess what? It's do or die. It's do or go home. Right. Um, backs against the walls. Like I score the first goal of this game too. And I'm just like, hallelujah. You know, for my own personal gain and my team, yeah. it was the first goal and there's a video and it's you literally the caption of it is like the, and the commentators are like, oh my God, you would have think, you would have thought they just won the game, just scoring the first goal in a game that we had to win. Yeah, was, totally. oh, and we ended up just winning like six zero. It was just like, like we were like, all right, backs against the walls. Like, like who cares? Don't leave anything behind. We have to win. Why right. not one? Go into game three, you know, still got to win. Series is tied one to one. Um, and again, our team comes out like a bat out of hell and we're just like, we just crush them like seven, two, just like, nope, you are not winning. Like this is our game again, backs against the wall, winner, go home. We got it. 
So then, um, and then unfortunately they paused the whole tournament um, and we have to go home. Oh no. COVID, you know, most of our team had COVID. Yeah. So it was just like a no go. Um, so we all go home and I'm like, Hmm, are they really going to like throw this together for three games? You know, we just need two days. Right. I don't know. Um, I quarantined at home. Um, and then I started getting on the Peloton bike, you know, trying to get in shape as best I could. Um, cause I couldn't really get ice time. And eventually we, we, we got the call that we were going to be having the semifinals and finals. Okay. And our team would be the number four seed, just like we had earned. Right. Um, and they were just deciding which weekend to do it on, but that, you know, practices would be resuming soon, which was awesome. Um, getting back with the girls and getting back to work as a team towards something that basically we were kind of like, blah. And then we, we were just speaking going in, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, and then, you know, we go into semifinals and, you know, it's at home. We're in Boston at our home rink and we're the away team. It's hysterical. Yeah. You know, like, cause we're the fourth seed. Got it. And it was just weird. Cause I spent the last two years playing, you know, on the home bench at this rink to only now go on to the other bench. It was right. just weird. It was just throwing me off, but it was, it was fine. But we went into it. We were super loose. Um, just enjoying every moment, you know, doing it for the person sitting next to you. A lot of the girls are not going to be playing hockey. They're retiring after this. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, again, do or die game, win or go home. And we, we played a very good game. Um, I think we went up, we started, we started ahead in that game. And um, yeah. I ended up scoring our team's third goal to make it three to one, nice. um, which was, I mean, this game was on NBC sports. It was on national TV. Oh, that's amazing. On a Friday night, my mom, I get a text later that night, basically saying when I scored, my mom was crying uncontrollably. I was like, why were you crying? Like what? Um, she was like, I just really wanted you to do well on national TV. Okay. I'm like, all right. All right. You're, you're cute. But like, honestly, like biggest goal in my life, uh, a really great moment. I was like, wow, I'm just like riding this high. It was awesome. Our team wins. My goal ended up being the game winning goal. Really incredible. Like a real like family experience. We're all like, Oh my God, we just, we were the number four seed. We just beat the number one seed. Everyone was like, oh my God, the Toronto team's going to win. They're so good. Like Boston's like, bleh. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, just absolutely destroyed them. So the Canadians don't, aren't better than us in hockey. Is what so this saying. is the first year of their, of their team in our uh, league. <laughs> so we'll give them a break this year. Okay. All right. All right. But no, super exciting to have another team in the league. Um, yeah. You know, signs that it's growing. It's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then going to our final, um, super funny because we end up playing Minnesota who we you were going to play game. the last year yes. when COVID won the cup. What? It's so funny because in 2020, like we were supposed to play Minnesota in Boston at our rink. Wow. And here we are uh, over a year later, Boston versus Minnesota for the cup. Wow. In Boston. Crazy. I was like, I honestly, and as one of the several, you know, returners on the team that that's how we wanted it. I was like, give me a minute. I want it. I want to, yeah. you know, put a bow tie on last year and, and really just finish it this Look year. That. Yeah. So super cool. Um, and I think as a team, we went into it, we're really relaxed, having fun, super loose, you know, dancing, being silly in the locker room and like, just, you know, not focusing too much on the game just because you don't want to get too hyper-focused and kind of like, right. Yeah. And kind of just like psych yourself out. Um, yeah. so I think we had a lot of fun and our coaches were like, guys, you, you guys play awesome when you have fun, just have fun. Like yeah. scoring is fun. Winning is fun. Just go. Yeah. Um, and of course going down one zero, like in the first period, I was like, <laughs> like, uh -oh. um, I was like, okay, um, well, guess what? Like we had to score a goal to win the game at yeah. some point. So guess we'll just tie it up and just go yeah. on the year. It's fine. Um, and just as a team, we just were like, eh, it's fine. Like we'll, we'll, we'll get through it. It's not like they scored with five seconds left in the game. Like yeah. we have time. 
Um, and we just chipped away and, and played. So everyone played so great, you know, playing with a team first mentality, you know, making those sacrifices, blocking shots or, um, you know, whatever it, it was, our goalies, goalie played great. Everyone just was, you know, we were all focused on the job at hand. Everyone, you know, knew their role and, and played their role to the best of their ability. And, um, honestly, the last 19 seconds we were, they scored and, um, it was four to three. And, um, for whatever reason, there was like a media timeout. And then I think they were reviewing to see how much time was left, which is a big deal. And it was just like, this is the longest 20 seconds of my life. I am so close to winning. Like we're so close. It's right there. Um, Oh, you guys were four and they were three. Yes. So we were winning four to three. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it was just so close. Um, and I was like, God, it's no big deal. Like we got this, we got this, like it's fine. Um, and you know, eventually, you know, I'm sitting on the bench. I'm literally like jumping, like, like, just like everyone's just like bananas on the bench. Um, like, Oh my God. Um, and we get the puck out and it's, you know, it's becoming reality and our goalie opens the door and we all just like run out and it's just like pandemonium. And it was, it was so exciting. Like all of us, we were so excited just because every single person, in the hockey world and, and and watching our league, no one thought we were going to win out of those. And to just be like, no, like no one wanted us to win. No one thought we were going to win. And it was awesome. Um, and it was just an incredible family accomplishment, um, on a year that didn't really go as planned, obviously, but still end up on top. Um, despite all those, um, you know, all the adversity that we all went through, um, was just incredible. I love that. Can we see, uh, there's a little friend next to you. Uh, oh, you want to meet Izzy? Yeah. Yeah. Can we want to meet her? She's shy. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you don't mind, yeah. Do you want, you want to meet her? So that right there is the, uh, NWHL equivalent of now they don't call it the Stanley Cup. So, what so is, this is the Isabel Cup, and Isabel, Isabel Cup. Okay, she is the daughter of Lord Stanley. Now ah. the Stanley Cup. So. There you go. Look at that. So right here, y'all, you're seeing it. You got right. it live right here. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So when now this is not the first Izzy cup for women's national hockey, but it is the first after COVID. And like you said, I love how the universe brings things full circle. And you talked about, you know, like people didn't, you know, they were betting against you. They didn't want you to win. There's all these things. Right. So as a final kind of end cap to this journey of, you know, playing hockey, doing club, going to Yale, not really having the option and then getting drafted, having this sort of, you know, moment of signing, but it's not quite the fanfare that the men get. What does this all mean to you? I think like when I finally got, you know, my hands on, on her on the ice after we won, it was just, everything, everything was, was, was what, everything was fine in that moment. Everything was perfect. Everything was great. It, nothing else mattered. Right. And, and, Cause all of the hard work, all of the blood, the sweat, the tears, every loss, every win, every, every painful sore waking up from a workout, every, everything like this, this is what it was for. Um, so it was obviously a very incredible moment for me personally, but to see my team do that, you know, having gone what we went through that year and the yeah. previous year for a lot of us, it was just, you know, cherry on top. Like it was, it was an incredible moment. And I think what, what, what's really important as well is that we were on national TV. So many young girls are watching this game and they play hockey or you look at young boys that are watching this game and they can see that women can play professional hockey. Women can be paid to play hockey. We're still working and striving towards increasing that salary so that I'm not working a full-time job as well. 
Yeah. That I can focus all my attention on hockey, just like a lot of the other NHL players. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure none of them have a nine to five like I do. Hello. That we know of. No, I'm just kidding. I do. I think so. Um, anyway, but just to, to share that moment with my team, the city of Boston, the city of champions, um, and with all the young girls watching back home, you know, I, you know, I dare them to dream and dream bigger, Mm -hmm. um, and, and striving towards that. That's really what it's all about for me. I'm not, I don't play hockey for the money. Um, Mm -hmm. I play hockey because I love it and I love inspiring younger girls to, to be, to be a pro hockey player like me or to be a scientist and play pro hockey, you know, go do that. Like I got a message from a mom and it just, you know, some messages like that just melt my heart because I'm like, oh my God, this eight year old has no idea what she's in for. (laughs) Um, But I'm just hoping and building the, you know, our league continuing to grow it from, you know, the early stages of the league. It's really awesome to be a part of such a young league to kind of mold it the way you kind of want it to and, and yeah. kind of push it forward and, and really push it across the finish line. So it was, it's really an incredible experience and it's, it's still been, you know, it's only been, you know, 10 days and it's still absolutely crazy. Um, it didn't seem real for a long time. I bet. I bet. It is probably very surreal when you've worked for something for so long. It didn't even exist when you were even journeying to the top of the mountain. And then now to be sitting here and being one of the few women on earth that can say that is, you know, fantastic. And I'm just so happy for you, Mallory. I mean, this is amazing. And being a pioneer for young girls, I mean, that that is priceless. And I know that you inspired a lot of people and kudos to those networks for televising it and, you know, giving more exposure to women's sports because we need that. What is your mental advantage tip? to athletes that might be listening or a a young girl that, you know, their parent is listening or something that you would pass on to those um, younger athletes. Yeah. I think the biggest thing for me is everyone has their own journey. Um, I was never, you know, I wasn't the best kid on my team all the time growing up. I wasn't on USA national teams. I wasn't on Olympic teams. Um, But I'm still one of the top players, you know, in the world. I get to I literally am an Isabel cup champion. Um, there's not many people that get to say that, um, and everyone has their own path in every journey. And, um, some people might, um, you might get cut from teams early on and, you know, that stinks, but you can still learn a lot from playing on a, you know, a second team. Um, that happened a lot to me growing up. I, you know, I was never the best kid. Um, and I think that's really motivational, um, to know that, just because, you know, you're not going the, the way you wanted to doesn't mean you're not going to get, get there eventually to your finish line. Did I ever think I would be an Isabel cup champion? No. Like my dream was to play college hockey and, you know, it's great that I did that. Um, and then as I got into the professional world, dreaming of being <laughs> lifting this, this baby girl up, um, was pretty surreal. So I think it's important to keep that in mind. No, I love that. I think that's important, right? Because there's so many people that think that they have to be the best. They have to, you know, have that perfect path. And we already know the story of Michael Jordan getting cut from his sophomore basketball team and so many countless others being told that they wouldn't be whatever they ended up being. And so I think that's important for people to learn from is that you can still be a professional or, you know, um, ascend to the highest heights, even if it wasn't your original plan, (laughs) or vision, but if you just put in the work, which I think you had the work ethic and the, you know, and just like, you wanted to be the best Mallory that you could be hockey player. And I think that obviously that is why it paid off. All right. So I, I, I don't know if Izzy's getting too heavy for you, but I've got some more questions. She's on my lap. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's, like, she's, she's not as big. How big is the Stanley cup? Like it's like the Stanley cup's pretty heavy. It's like, okay. Stanley Cup's a lot bigger than she's, she's, you know, yeah, her body size, but she's like, she's like 30 pounds roughly. That's still heavy though. 30 pounds. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, you know, not light. Yeah, exactly. Not something you want to be like, yeah, I'm going to, yeah. Pearls. 
All right. So we got some rapid fire questions for you. Okay. All right. Uh, what is your favorite snack? Oh, um, Trader Joe's dried mango. All right. Trader Joe's dried mango. I have like four packages of, in the pantry. <laughs> I buy them in bulk and I go through the whole bag in like one sitting. It's terrible, but so good. Well, if we come over, we know to ask Mallory for uh, dried mango. Okay. Uh, favorite flavor of ice cream. Oh, okay. So I'm actually lactose intolerant. So oh. really sad, but Ben and Jerry's has a really good non-dairy ice cream called PB and cookies. Oh. Super good. It's like vanilla and it's got like some peanut butter swirl and like, um, it's got peanut butter swirl and like Oreos in it. Oh, so yes. good. And it doesn't I'm taste like it's not non, like it doesn't taste like it's non-dairy. So I might have to give that a shot because I am a vegan. Um, I'm not, so I do do the non-dairy. Um, I don't do Ben and Jerry's as much. Um, there's another, some other brands that I really like. Yeah. But I'll give that one a shout. Give it a try. That's awesome. Yeah. That's what I always say when people say they're lactose intolerant. I'm like, dude, vegan, vegan, non-dairy frozen dessert. It can't be called ice cream because you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that, but yeah. Fun fact. All right. So the other question, um, I have a few more, but, uh, who, what superpower would you want and why? Fly. I think it's super fun. I love going really fast. Yeah. Like, I love skating and just like, shh. um, but also like going to like places around the world really fast would be like really fun and I'm traveling. I'm not, I don't really like flying in planes. They kind of freak me out. Um, so that would be like, a, you know, we'd avoid that issue. And yeah, like now I could just, at least I'm directing the flying. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that is awesome. And it is the number one answer. I've had more flying than anything. Me, I'm a teleporter. I don't even want to oh, deal with it. I just want to be like, bam, I'm in Italy. Yay. I'm here. So, <laughs> unless I'm going first class. Then I'm like, okay, maybe I can deal with this. All right. So uh, now this one is probably the most personal question. Uh, and I have, it, it, it's kind of got some parts to it. Uh, in your bathroom, there's something called toilet paper. Are you an over the top or are you an under the bottom? And why do you feel the way you feel? Over the top. Like, I, I don't know. I think people are crazy if they go the, the other way. Cause then it's like, what happens when the, the paper gets like stuck in the back and you're like, <laughs> the top, you're like, well then also the cats love when it's over the top. Cause then they can just. See, okay. I've heard this, right? So as a cat owner, I'm surprised you're an over the top because I've heard the unders say that it actually helps preserve your paper when the, t the cat can get to it. So I've trained my cats to just like, a, not okay. go just, just get away from it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now to, to find out how intense you are about the over the top, which by the way, I'm in an over the top as well. So no, you know, um, and by the way, I don't think I've had only one person that was just like, ah, doesn't really matter. Don't think about it. But almost every athlete I've interviewed has been an over the top. So I think if we're, I don't want to call it an unofficial study, but it might be all athletes are over the top. <laughs> okay. <laughs> which seems on brand. All right. So question, would you change it? Do you change it at your house? Do I change the toilet paper? Oh, do I change it? If someone way? put it on the wrong way, like, you know, your mom came and she put toilet paper. Oh, I need to change this. Would you change it? Um, I mean, mm. okay. I, I, I'm not going to like, I mean, if that's my apartment. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's at I your usually, if it's my apartment, um, usually, I, usually I'm the one who actually changes it. Okay. Um, my brother's kind of lazy, but <laughs> Okay. Um, but, right. um, yeah, I, I mean, if, if, if he did, if he did do it wrong, he'd probably just change it. It's too easy. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't go to my mom's house, my parents' house and you wouldn't it. change it. Okay. I, wouldn't change, the house. I wouldn't change theirs. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I understand. I understand. So some people do, I don't either. I'm not a changer at other people's houses, Yeah, but I am a, a changer at my house. Like if you don't put it on right, I'm going to change it. Yeah. <laughs> there is a right way. And are you a bathroom snooper? Have you ever gone through anyone's cabinets or anything like that? <laughs> Oops. Ah, see, thank you for being honest. But, you're like, the, but yes, I don't. You can learn a lot about someone, even if it's your friend or, or a boyfriend or 
don't know, whatever. I, the only places I've ever really snooped. Yeah. And it's, see, I just want people to know that this exists. Okay. There are people that <laughs> you invite to their house. They may change your toilet paper and they probably have looked in your cabinets. Yeah. If they're going to admit it or not. hundred percent different thing. That's I am just keep them clean and, and stocked. All exactly. <laughs> right. And keep toilet paper under so that they can change it and put it on the way they want. All right. Um, who is your personal hero? My mom. Um, she's the best. She, um, growing up, she, she didn't come from a lot. Um, but she made the most of every opportunity that she had to grow and to push herself. Um, and when she met my dad in college, like they, they did a really good job, you know, they saved money because my mom, you know, didn't come from a lot. So it was, you know, there weren't any lavish purchases in, in a sense. Um, they saved a lot of money and I think she's helped me a lot to, um, you know, ingrain that in me to, to be smart. And like, although you can buy a Gucci belt, you right. shouldn't buy a Gucci belt. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, she made like all the sacrifices, you know, 6am hockey. She was the one driving the minivan there. She was driving all over kingdom come to take me to tournaments. You know, she took off. I mean, looking back now, I'm like, how did she take off all those Fridays to, for hockey tournaments? Um, so obviously using, you know, PTO and sick days to come and take me to hockey tournaments, um, and, you know, doing everything in her power yeah, to allow me to take advantage of every single opportunity. My parents had to, you know, pay money for a private school. I could have gone to my town school for you know, free, basically. Yeah. Um, you know, they pay taxes, but like that, um, and they made it work. And they made, you know, they made Yale work. It wasn't the best thing for the family financially, but they did what they could to make it the best for me. And so that kind of sacrifices are, they mean like the world to me and she's the best. (laughs) I love her. Amazing. I think, yeah, I think the moms don't get enough credit, right? Because if not, um, like, you know, I mean, not that the dads are not involved, but I think think sometimes the dads are a little, a little spacey too, but maybe that's just like the females in us. We, maybe towards other females, um, you know, because yeah, because the mom's got to keep it all together. What's going on this weekend? Was I'm I'm sure your mom had some like, my mom on the, yeah, (laughs) my mom's super type A. My dad just like, I don't, I I don't think he has a type, but I'm like, I'm more, I'm a little toned down type A. I'm very organized. Right. I have a calendar on my wall. I have, you know, call with Bryn at whatever time it's in my phone. It's in my work calendar blocked up. Like everything's gotta be like written down or I'm going to forget it because I have a lot going on. Um, and my mom's like that too. So it's awesome. And last question, what do you want to be remembered for? Oh. I know it's a tough one. Well, I just hope that, you know, people remember me as someone who, you know, inspired and motivated younger girls to, to dream bigger, you know, dream of working in science and being a woman in STEM. It's getting better and numbers are getting better. Um, and to also dream, you know, dream of playing professional hockey. Like that is a career that we are hoping to make your only career, your solo career in hockey. Um, so hopefully, you know, somewhere sometime down the road, I'm reti- long retired. I have a family of my own and, and there's someone playing for the Boston pride and they, you know, they remember me. I think um, that would, you know, that would make my day. It just, it doesn't have to be anyone famous or, or like good, just like one, one person, one person would be enough. I think just leaving the hockey world better than I found it. I think. I love that. And I'm sure it's going to be many more. And I, and thank you for speaking about STEM. I don't think a lot of people, you know, I, I mean, I think some people know, but like you're a pioneer in two areas, right? Like yeah. you know, working in STEM, women's hockey, you know, doing all these amazing things. And so just thank you for everything you're doing. Where can people connect with you um, so that if they want to follow your journey in both the science world, as well as hockey? Yeah. Um, I'm on Instagram at my pal mal one four. Um, I also have a link tree on there. So, um, that should connect to all my other socials, um, on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. I think my, like, you can even like email me from there. Um, so if anyone ever wants to get in touch or, um, you know, wants a signed photo for their daughter, uh, you know where to find me. Cause I think, you know, like it's something small for me in my head. It's, you know, I'm signing a piece of 
a, a photograph I print out at CVS for 80 cents. Um, but when that girl gets it, what it means to her is just, just exponentially more. And that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Representation matters. And yes. thank you, Mallory. Uh, this has just been such a treat. Thank you for sharing your journey with us and your uh, mental advantage and look forward to hearing more about your successes on and off the ice. All right. Thank you, Bren. Thank you so much for having me.